I said, praise the Lord. It's been a wonderful time since we began this conference and forum. And I praise the Lord for every one of you. And I pray that as you have received all these instructions and the teachings that you have received from the word of the Lord, that you'll never remain the same in Jesus' name. Close your eyes as we pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you at this time. We bless your name. Because you are bringing us to the conclusion. You are bringing us to the consummation. You are bringing us to the climax of what we came for during this minister's conference and professional forum. Lord, we pray that your word will do good in every life in Jesus' name. Amen. And you help every one of us to succeed in the ministry. And to prosper in the profession you have given unto us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. You can sit down. Since we began our conference and forum, conference for the ministers, and forum for the professionals, we've gone through quite a lot. We've seen the man. And if the man is going to do anything, God is going to work on his mind. The man and his mind. And then when God gives you the mind of Christ, he gives you, number three, a message. You, you have the man, and the man has the mind, and the mind also contains the message. And then with the message, he puts you into the ministry, the man. The mind, as well as the message and the ministry. And then as you go on, by the anointing of the Lord upon your life, then he gives you the method. And with the method that is engineered by the Spirit, method generated by the Spirit, and method that is being guided and controlled by the Spirit, he grants you multiplication in ministry. But you see, everything starts with the man. The man, the mind, the message, the ministry, the message, and then the multiplication. That the Lord then impacts your life, empowers your life, and great things are done through you. And then if you're going to be the man like that, that is used of God, you must understand you're coming to the ministry. And it is a privilege the Lord has given to you. And that privilege the Lord has given to you, you want to wait. You want to value it. And you want to appreciate it. And you want to be very grateful to the Lord because of that privilege. And then you understand that you must have some qualities in your life. That the Lord will see and they will keep on pouring the anointing upon your life so that you'll be used of the Lord without going back or decreasing. That's what led us to the indispensable qualities that we need to have in our lives. And th those qualities of integrity, qualities of influence, and qualities of intercession, joined with transparency and trust and travail. They are the things that the Lord will see in our lives. And then he'll be able to make use of us according to his original dream. God has a dream. And when your dream comes in connection with the dream of the Almighty God himself, and you walk hand in hand with the Lord until the end of the day, that's when you succeed. You know, sometimes God has a dream for you. As a dream for me as a dream for many other people but many people do not carry through in the dream of the Lord here was Saul of the tribe of Benjamin and the children of Israel were designing a king give us a king that will lead us into battle like all the other nations and God eventually said all right I'll give them and you know whenever God gives us anything he doesn't grudge us and he doesn't kind of minimize what he gives. He sought for the very best in the land, and he gave them Saul. 
And God had a big dream for Saul as a leader. But the dream of Saul did not comply, was not compatible with the dream of the Almighty God. And God began to tell him, Saul, let's work together. I have a project. We're going to do it together. God working with them, confirming the word with signs following. He wanted to work with Saul. He said, I remember the Amalekites. I have a project. I have a goal. I have a dream. I have an assignment. I would have done it myself. But let's come and work together. We are laborers together with God. Go to those Amalekites and this is what you do. He went there and he got to the Amalekites and what the Lord wanted him to do, he did not do. And then God told Samuel, he said, Samuel, it repenteth me. I regret that I chose this man. His dream does not continue. So align with my dream. He has deviated. And then he said, I'm going to seek for another man. And then he said, I found a man after my own heart who will fulfill all my will. He wants you to have a dream, a desire, a goal, a destination. A survey was carried out some years ago. That he is, he looked at some people. And these people were in a very good institution, a university. And then they went to all the final year students there. And they asked them, what is your goal in life? Have you reached down the goals you are going to accomplish after graduating from school? And 3% of those students had goals that were reaching down. 97% of them did not have reaching down goals. They didn't say, by the year such and such, this is what I will achieve. This is what I would have done. This is where I would have been. And this is where I would be on the ladder of success in my profession. Only 3% of them had goals reaching down. Dream reaching down. Destination written down. The future projected achievement written down. Ten years later, they went back to interview all those students again. Ten years after they came out of school. That's what they discovered. Those three percent that had goals written down. They discovered after ten years that these three were ten times in everything money position possession everything they are 10 times more than the rest of the 97 percent and they have carried out that kind of survey in different parts of the world and what they have always discovered is the people that live with a dream in mind with a goal in mind with a destination in mind those people always they go beyond the rest of the people that don't have any goals and i can still think about it myself i didn't know they called it goals those days i didn't know that they called it a dream but i had a goal i had a dream i had an ambition sanctified ambition and when i was in school I said, this is what, by the grace of God, I will do in my profession as well as in the Christian life, in the Christian ministry. I didn't know that they called it goals, but I, I wrote it down. And then I imagined it. And I saw the road that will lead there. And that's why we are where we are today. And I can now see some of the fellow students in my class. I mean, we studying together. Some of them as brilliant as I was. And some of them had good certificates like I had. The only thing is, they didn't have any goal. They just lived a jolly, happy, good life. And they just came to class. And they answered the questions. And they got a certificate. But they had no goal. And as I, once in a while, I meet a few of them. And then we just say bye-bye because we're not in the same class anymore. 
and we're not on the same siege anymore and we cannot work together anymore we just say bye bye thank you very much don't you remember me i remember you thank you god bless you go your way go my way but you must have a goal so if we come to the end of all that we're doing now everything you have listened to and you have accepted them you have prayed about them but you don't have a goal what's your goal as a father what's your goal as a mother what's your goal as a minister in the church what's your plan what's your project what's your goal in your profession where you are and what is your goal as a person of consequence a person of note in your community what do you dream of what do you want to accomplish that's what you need to think about and when you have those goals and you write the goals down you will achieve Amen. i said you will achieve Amen. and it is so that you will achieve that's why i bring this message to you the final message in our series serving faithfully till the end serving faithfully till the end in Revelation chapter 2, verses 25 and 26. Revelation chapter 2, verse 25. But that which ye have already hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works. Unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. You see what the Lord is telling us? He singles you out. And he says, he that overcometh. They don't be lost in the crowd. I'm part of them. That's great. I'm one of them. That's great. But Joseph singled out himself. I'm coming out of the park. I'm going to do something with my life. And that man was the dream he had. He went on to the very end. Joshua singled out himself as a leader in the land. And he said, this is the kind of leader I will be. Jeremiah singled out himself. And Jeremiah said, this is who I am. And this is what I will be. After the initial doubts, John the Baptist singled out himself. A voice crying in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. John the Beloved singled out himself. And God gave revelation to him from the angel that came to, uh, from heaven. And then Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. He was not among the multitude. He was a unique person. He was a called person. He was a saint person. He singled out himself. If you are going to achieve, you don't think about yourself like just one of them. Like one of the pack. Like one of the men. Like one of the ministers. Like one of the professionals. You single out yourself. I have a life to live. I have a ministry to carry out. I have a dream to realize. I have a goal to achieve. I have a destiny that I must reach. When you single out yourself and then you say, I have started. I have begun. And I'm going to go and move on until the very end. Those people that single out themselves and they come out of the crowd and they come out of the park. And they say, the rest of my life will be a life of note, a life of worth, a life of consequence. Those are the people that make it. Those are the people that achieve. And but that which ye have already, hold fast until I come. He that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end. To him will I give power over the nations, serving faithfully till the end. In 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 7. I have fought a good fight. There's a man that singled out himself. If you know the life of Paul the Apostle, you can summarize the life of Paul the Apostle with this sentence, Others may, I cannot. He said, Are they apostles? So I am. Are they ministers of God? So I am. 
do they have liberty and they take you and they take around this and that so i could but i will not because he singled out himself a man with a project a man with a plan a man with a purpose and a man with a passion and a man with a pursuit he had something he was going to arrive at he had something he was going to achieve and he just went straight on Paul the others are doing this never mind this is my way Paul they think that you are mad much religion has gotten into you and you are mad don't worry this is the way and the man that will not look in any other direction and he goes on walking and he goes on walking there's a path before him and it will not be diverted to here or there. That's the man, the woman, the Lord is calling you to be this afternoon. Amen. And you will be. Amen. And you will be. Amen. Just one life. And just one project. And just one thing to do. And you say, and then at the end of the journey, at the end of the ministry, you can say like Paul the Apostle, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have catch the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto every, unto all them also, that love is appearing. I divide the message to three parts. Number one, fulfilling the ministry. Number one, fulfilling the ministry. The Lord has called you, and you want to fulfill the ministry. Number two, faithfulness in ministry faithfulness in ministry number three fruitfulness in ministry you will be fruitful because you are not going to be barren you will not be barren in your family you will not be barren in the church you will not be barren in the ministry and then in your profession you will not be barren fruitfulness in ministry number one fulfilling the ministry we're looking at colossians chapter 4 verse verse 17 Colossians chapter 4 verse 17 and say to Archippus take heed to the ministry which thou hast received in the Lord that thou fulfill it that's the message the Lord is giving you this day take heed to the ministry which you have received in the Lord that thou fulfill it that watch take heed take note watch over preserve protect hold to yourself keep guard don't allow anything to tamper with this you know it's like for example you have a box and this particular box contains some sheets of paper it also contains your certificate and then it contains some other things and all these other things you can easily find a replacement and then the wind is blowing and there is a river you see nearby and as the wind is blowing it's blowing everything in the direction of the sea and then your box was opened and then I said the sea was a blowing, it was blowing all the papers, and your certificate is there. And you want to grab something very quickly so that the wind will not blow everything away. Which one are you going to hold first? Tell me out loud. Your certificate. Why? Because if you have that certificate, all the other things you can get through that certificate. The important thing, the essential thing. That the wind must not blow away. That's the one you have to take heed to. All the other sheets of paper, are they not just sheets of paper? If they are blown away, you can go to the shop in front there and then buy other sheets of paper. No big deal. Not too important. All the other things, all the other things that you even wanted to throw away before. Now the wind is helping you to carry them and throw them away. Praise the Lord. <laughs> but your certificate... The real thing, the essential thing, the important thing, the indispensable thing, your ministry. Take heed unto the ministry that you have received in the Lord. And then it says that thou fulfill it. 
fulfill it. Now, that word fulfill, I can divide it into two. Full and then feel. And I say it this way. You have to feel it full before you can fulfill it. You have to feel it full before you can fulfill it. What does that mean? You have a ministry. Your time, feel your time full with that ministry. You have a mind. Feel your mind full with that ministry. You have your thoughts. Feel your thoughts full with that ministry. And your heart, hands. Feel your hands full. Get something doing. Feel your hands full with that ministry. But you know, if you have a ministry and you are just there part of the time and you think about it part of the time and you act, activate it only part of the time and you get involved with it only part of the time, you're not going to fulfill the ministry because it's not filling up your heart, it's not filling up your mind. It's not filling up your imagination. It's not filling up your plan. It's not filling up every part of you. When you feel your heart, your life, your money, your plan, everything you have, you feel it full of the ministry. Then you will fulfill the ministry. It means that you bring all your intelligence into the ministry. All your time into the ministry. All your resources into the ministry. All your wisdom into the ministry. And when you feel your time, your life, you have nothing else you are thinking about. You have nothing else you are planning about. You have nothing else you are dreaming about. You have nothing else you are involved in. The only thing you are involved in is this ministry. The Lord has given to you and you feel it full with everything you have got. That's when you'll fulfill the ministry. And it says, say to Archippus, put your name there. Say to so and so. And say to such and such. And say to this individual, Take heed to the ministry you have received in the Lord, that thou fulfill it. And you know, sometimes people will talk to you. And anytime somebody talks to you, they are making a comparison, but you don't know. When somebody says, for example, that you are working too much, in their mind, they are comparing you with somebody else who is lower than you are. They are comparing you with somebody else who is having less ministry than you have. They are comparing you with somebody else who has a lesser calling than you have. And then when they compare you with that other person in their mind, they say, brother, you are running too fast. Brother, you are going too hard. Brother, you are doing too much. Sister, this is too much. Every time they say too much, too much, too much, they are comparing you with somebody who doesn't have as much as you have. They are not comparing you with the president of our country, I can tell you. Because if they compare you with the president, they know that the president has to come to Cross River State, and he has to go to Ogun State, and he has to go to your state. He has to also see to what's happening in Abuja over there. Then he has to go outside to Europe. Then he has to go to the people that will help us to have debt uh, relief or release or whatever. Then he has to come back. He has to attend to the media people. Then he must make sure that uh, it's a monthly something that he shares with television. He has to do that. And then all the other minutes and the Senate. He has to attend to them. He has to do this. He has to do that because he's president. And any time they tell you, brother, you are running too fast, they are not comparing you with him. They are comparing you with somebody behind you. And they're saying, come back. No, we cannot come back. We have a greater ministry. I said we have a greater ministry. Yeah. And because we have somewhere we're going, and we have something that is driving us, we're not even running fast yet. And after this day, you hear this message, you are going to run faster in Jesus' name. Yeah. When they compare you with Moses, they're not going to tell you you're running too fast. When they compare you with Paul the Apostle, they will not tell you you're running too fast. When they compare you with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, in only three and a half years, see what he did. They are not going to say you are running too fast. They are telling you you are running too fast and you are doing too much because they are comparing you with the wrong kind of people. Don't look back, look up. And look forward. And then see the goal ahead of you. And see the destination ahead of you. And you will achieve, you will arrive there in Jesus' name. Amen. And then when you get there, then we can rest. 
I said then we can raise. This is time to work. And this is time to labor. And this is time to feel everything you've got to fill it full with the ministry. And then you will fulfill the ministry. Acts of the Apostles chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. I'm reading from verse 24. But none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself. So that I might finish my course with joy. And the ministry which I received of the Lord, of the Lord Jesus, to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Now, always listen to the language of people. I don't mean to copy them. Listen to the way they talk. And you will tell what's the most important to them. Listen to the complaints of people. And you can tell what's the most important to them. And listen to the grumbling, the, the murmurings of people. And you can tell what is the most important thing to them. Now, if the ministry is the most important to you, and if the cause that the Lord has laid before you is the most important to you, that's all you see. All you see is opportunity for ministry. You don't see obstacle. You don't see obstacle. When the ministry is on your heart, when the ministry is in your mind, when the ministry is in your brain, when the ministry is in your dream, when the ministry has occupied you, eating you up, saturated you through and through, you don't see obstacles, you see opportunities. And when you listen to people, if they're always talking of obstacle, 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 that's where their mind is. They have not filled their mind. They have not filled their emotion. They have not filled their heart with the ministry. Here Paul the Apostle said, but none of these things move me that's a man of ministry that's a man with a mind that's a man that has the mystery of the gospel committed into his son and he said i am in for something one life i live and that one single life is going to be occupied with the ministry paul do you have any obstacle i don't think about them i don't want to talk about them i don't want to talk about them when you talk about your problems, they look bigger. When you talk about your hindrances, they look stronger. When you talk about your fears, they increase. When you talk about your obstacles, they become a big mountain. But to stab them to death by not even talking about them. And you don't even think about them. All you think about, all you talk about, all you plan about, all you look at is the opportunity before you. And I dare tell you this afternoon, there's opportunity before you. Yeah. And this opportunity, you will seize it, you will hold it, you will run with it. Yeah. And you will succeed in ministry in Jesus' name. Yeah. That is how to fulfill the ministry. Not looking at obstacles, but looking at opportunities. None of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself. Or what do you mean? Do you mean you are not afraid of death? Paul the Apostle said, yes, that's what I'm saying. Why are you saying that? Because one day, if Jesus tarries, everybody will die. I said everybody will die. <laughs> Do you want to die a useless death? Sleeping inside the room? And then deteriorating and getting old inside the room? I learned about somebody in 30 years, listen to me, in 30 years, he only came out three times. Why? He was afraid. They will kill me there. They are waiting for me there. They will disturb me there. My enemies are waiting over there. And then she stayed. I'm telling you, true story, true story. 30 years inside the house. My friend, come out. It's better to die a useful man than to die a useless man. It's better to die winning the victory on the battlefield than to die a life of ease, a life of indolence. And then when you die, there's nothing to remember about you. If there are enemies, come out and face them. If there are challenges, come out and face them. If there are mountains, come out and climb your mountain. By the time you come out, you will see those enemies will flee before you. 
none of this is move me i'm challenging you this afternoon stop looking at obstacle there is opportunity before us yeah. opportunity to evangelize opportunity to minister opportunity to heal the sick opportunity to do something for the lord you will come out and you will climb and your mountains will flee before you in jesus name you know if you're too much afraid you will not do the impossible you'll not do the incredible and nothing will be reaching down concerning you the people that fulfill the ministry are the people that say christ is there i'm following after christ i'm going to do what christ is doing and you will succeed then he said the reason why i don't count any of these things important is so that i might finish you get something started get it finished that i might finish my cause with joy and the ministry which i have received of the lord jesus will testify of the gospel of the grace of god we will do it and we will finish it in second timothy chapter 4 i'm reading from verse 5 second timothy chapter 4 i'm reading from verse 5 but watch thou in all things endure affliction endure affliction oh you say that's tough not at all look up here when i was in school i learned one lesson that when the teacher came to class and he taught something difficult something hard something tall that before i learned about how to learn you know you need to learn how to learn before i learned how to learn when the teacher taught something difficult i will resist it i say no this too much i cannot take that and then i discover that when i go to the next subject there is something that i meet there and the one i avoided before the lesson i didn't learn before i need it here now in mathematics it happens so often that what you were taught last week you must understand it before you can tackle the problem of today and if you avoided the one of last week we have to do now remedial teaching you have to have remedial learning and go back again and learn that thing and anything you try to avoid today any obstacle you try to avoid today any difficulty you try to avoid today tomorrow you'll meet it again if you try to avoid it tomorrow you're not going to go to the next lesson you're not going to go to the next stage you're not going to go to the next level until you master that lesson you'll meet it again why then be wise why don't you be wise don't you be wise and today learn it and today endure it and today face it and when you face it today then you overcome then when you go there tomorrow already you are champion do i have champions in the room this afternoon i said do i have champions in the room this afternoon champions are not made by running from the battlefield champions are made by facing your difficulty and your challenge overcome it today you are an overcomer tomorrow and so endure affliction and then it says do the work of the evangelist and make full proof of thy ministry we will do it you know if those of us who are here just this bunch as we are here if you make up your mind that this thing we're learning this period together that this is what you all do you are going to evangelize the whole of this state and you can evangelize the whole of this nation and you can evangelize the whole of africa it can be done and it will be done i come to point number two point number two faithfulness in ministry faithfulness in ministry who are the people that achieve in ministry they are the people who are faithful and how do we become faithful you understand i say must in your life m-u-s-t must look at the life of jesus and see how faithful he was in luke chapter 2 verse 49 Luke chapter 2 verse 49 and he said unto them how is it that she sought me which she not that i must be about my father's business you see a man that knows there's a must over his life a woman that knows there is a must over her life then those are the people that actually get something done they they, they conducted another research some years ago and they wanted to find out 
who are the people that are less sick in the community than other people? Now we know that in all communities, almost everybody gets sick. But they wanted to find out who are the people that are less sick, less sick than any group of people in a society. And then they examined nurses and doctors, and they saw the percentage of nurses and doctors that were sick. They left that, they looked at other professionals, and then they looked at those who were sick, the proportion, and then they wrote that down. They looked at teachers, and then they interviewed many, many teachers, and they saw the proportion of teachers that were sick. Then they interviewed nursing mothers. The women that just had children, and they were nursing their children. And they took those mothers between, that were nursing children between the age of zero and six months. And these nursing mothers, they interviewed many, many of them. And they looked at the percentage of nursing mothers that were sick. Here's what they discovered. They discovered that the people that were less sick than other people were the nursing mothers. Why? Because, number one, the joy of childbearing. The joy that I'm doing something that nobody else can do. That this is a ministry. And this is a work. Father cannot do this one. Teacher cannot do this one. Nurses cannot do this one for me. Doctor cannot do this. This is my ministry. This child. I'm raising this child. They wake up in the night. And they will change the diapers. And they will do a lot of things. But they remain well. They made up their minds. They were going to remain well. And they were well. They saw that they were healthier than doctors. Healthier than nurses. Healthier than engineers. Healthier than teachers. Healthier than everybody else. Women, put your hands together for yourself. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, when your ministry is like a baby to you. And you are not seeing that baby. And you are waking up because of that baby. And you wake up in the night, you read a little Bible because of that baby. And then you pray and intercede because of that baby. And you take your ministry like a baby. And they say, come here and not see my baby. And they say, come over there and not see my baby. And you take your ministry like a baby you are taking care of, you will be well. <laughs> you will be healthy. And you will be strong in the Lord in Jesus' name. And you know, this is the reason why some people, they just keep well and they keep going. Because they know there is a must upon their lives. I'm looking at John chapter 9 verse 4. I must. There was a must in the life of Christ. In John chapter 9 verse 4. I must walk the works of him that sent me. While it is day, the night cometh when no man can work. Must. And then in your own life now, you know there must be a must. Find out something in your life that to say, I may not do this. I may not do that. It may not be my privilege and luck to do this. It may not be my assignment to do this. But this I must do. When there is a must in your life, Something you must accomplish. Something that no other person can do it for you. This is what you must do. You'll be faithful in Acts of the Apostles chapter 9. Acts chapter 9 verse 6. In Acts chapter 9 verse 6. And he trembling. And as Tony said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city. And it shall be told thee what thou must do. Paul the apostle received a must upon his life before he ever went out. And when you have that must, and you know that this is the thing that you must do, and no other person can do it for you, you must accomplish it, you will accomplish it. Amen. And you will be an achiever. One wants to just know that this is the ministry the Lord has given me. This is the plan and the project the Lord has given me. No other person can do it. I will do it. And you will do it. Amen. And if we meet again and I think by the grace of God, we're going to meet again. Amen. And when we meet again, there will be testimony in your mouth. Amen. You are going to succeed. Amen. You are going to achieve. 
just identify what the Lord has called you to. Stay at it. Stay at it. It will be done. Acts chapter 23 verse 11. Acts 23 verse 11. And the night following, the Lord stood by him and said, Be of good comfort, be of good cheer, Paul, for as thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem, so must thou bear witness also at Rome. So must thou bear witness at Rome. Now with that must, Paul the apostle knew that anything could happen between chapter 23 and 28. God said, I must. No death will kill you before that must. Yeah. And no accident will take your life before that must. Yeah. And you know, it was after, after God said, you must bear witness for me in Rome also. The 40 people gathered themselves together and they made a vow and they said they will not eat or drink until they killed Paul the Apostle. That's the vow they made. How could they not kill Paul the Apostle? Because there was a must. He must still pass from that place and go to Rome. And all those 40 people were wasting their time. Because how can you kill a man when God said, before you come over and answer the final call and come to me, there is something I've written down in the courts of heaven that Paul, before you come, you must. When God said, you must, who can touch your life? Why are you afraid? I said, why are you afraid? There is a must in your life. And if the Lord says that most is over there and in between here and there, there are, there are lions, those lions, when you are passing, they cannot open their mouth. <laughs> did you see Daniel? Why didn't uh, the lions eat Daniel? Because he prayed, yes, I know. Because he was faithful, yes, I know. And because he was, uh, you know, he was a good man, yes, I know. Because he was a beloved man, yes, I know. But let me tell you, that was chapter 6 of Daniel. And the revelation from chapter 7 to chapter 12, God had said no other person will deliver that revelation to the world but Daniel. And God had not given chapter 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then they put him in the lion's den. What do you think the lions will do? They'll close their mouth. And because God has assignment for you that you are going to carry out I rejoice with you yeah. I said I rejoice with you yeah. you will live and you will not die yeah. because between this day and that day every lion on the way they will be looking at you like this yeah. they will not be able to touch your life because there is a must in your life keep to that must and you will overcome yeah. i come to point number three fruitfulness in ministry fruitfulness in ministry in john chapter 15 john chapter 15 verse 2 every branch in me that beareth not fruit he taketh away and every branch that beareth fruit he purgeth it that it may bring forth more fruit you have fruit already you are going to have more fruit yeah. and then in verse 5 I am the vine and ye are the branches he that abideth in me and I in him the same bringeth forth much fruit for without me ye can do nothing do you see the progress we are making from fruit to more fruit from more fruit to much fruit and then we're looking at verse 16 ye have not chosen me but i have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain you have fruit you have more fruit you have much fruit and then you have fruit remaining fruit abiding fruit conserved and then it says and that whatsoever ye ask of the father in my name he may give it to you i said he will give it to you 
now the question I'm asking you is now that the Lord has this plan and project for your life what are you going to ask the Lord how are you going to live your life will your life be useless life God forbid your life will be a useful life Amen. it will be an important life Amen. in this country in which we are in this continent in which we are you will make a definite positive mark in Jesus name Amen. before I close in Luke chapter 5 Luke chapter 5 I'm looking at him from verse 3 and he entered into one of the ships that was Simon's and prayed him that he should thrust out a little from the land and he sat down and taught much people out of the ship. Peter had a ship, a boat and Jesus said, can I use your boat? Oh, and he said, with all pleasure and he handed over his boat unto the Lord and the Lord is asking you today can I use your boat can I use your speech can I use your tongue can I use your house and establish a church there can I use your backyard and put some canopy there can I use what you have and preach out of it how many of us are surrendering everything to the Lord I said how many are surrendering everything to the Lord God bless you and then in verse 4 now when he had left speaking he said unto simon launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught and simon answering said unto him master we have toiled all night and we have taken nothing we have toiled all night we have failed we have taken nothing we have not achieved anything but nevertheless at thy word i will let down the net the Lord is telling you go back to the ministry and succeed yeah. go back to your church and succeed yeah. go back to your profession and succeed yeah. let down your nerves and then Peter said Lord we have tried all night we caught nothing but I'll start again because of what you have said I'll go back and start again yeah. so he said I will let down the nerves and when he had this done he enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break net breaking success yeah. i said net breaking success yeah. and it has come your way yeah. why don't you rise up and receive that victory rise up and receive that success rise up and receive the abundance the lord is giving you you are going back and you are going to succeed you are going back and you are going to be fruitful you are going back and you are going to do exploits for the lord nothing negative anymore only positive fruitfulness don't worry about past failure this is a new season this is a new period this is a new time a new time of victory a new time of success a new time of fruitfulness go back and succeed go back and succeed in your profession in your ministry in your calling we've toiled all night we took nothing yet nevertheless at thy word I will let down the net. Fulfill the ministry. Fulfill the ministry. Fill the ministry full. Put in all your strength. Put in all your ability. Put in all your attention. And succeed don't look at obstacles look at opportunities don't look at problems look at the promises and the possibilities go out and succeed you can make it 
You can do it. You surrender your boat to the Lord. Surrender your life to the Lord. Surrender your intelligence to the Lord. Surrender all your resources to the Lord. Let him use your life. Let him use everything you have. The time of harvest and fruitfulness has come. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. We thank the Lord for what the Lord has done already. And I want you to block failure away from your mind. And block impossibility away from your mind. What you have not been able to do in the past, you will do from now on. You will be an achiever in Jesus' name. If you believe you have the victory, shout Amen. God bless every one of you. Amen. Amen. Raise up that hand of victory. You will succeed. Every enemy before you will be defeated. Between here and the point of success, no lion will touch your life. Almighty God, we thank you at this time. I bless your name for all my brothers and sisters and fellow ministers who are here. Oh Lord, I pronounce your success upon them in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, you'll be the wall of fire around everyone. Everywhere they go, evil eyes will not be able to see them. Evil hands will not be able to touch them. Nothing evil will happen to them in Jesus' name. Any sickness, any weakness, any infirmity, any deformity in their lives. Take them away in Jesus' name. Give them a new vision, a new revelation, a new anointing, a new power, a new authority, a new boldness. And they will be achievers in the work of the Lord in Jesus' name. Every profession represented here, oh Lord, all these professional people, they will climb the ladder of their profession. And you take everyone to the mountain top in Jesus' name. All the wisdom everyone needs, give the wisdom to them. And all the power, the health, and the wealth they need, give everything to them. Oh Lord, when we meet again, it will be a time of testimony. It will be a, a time of joy. A time of reunion in the greatness of the Lord in Jesus' name. May, may the anointing of God go with you. May the power of the Lord go with you. May abundant grace sufficient for all seasons go with you in Jesus' name. You will run, you will not be weary. You will walk and you will not fail. And every hindrance ahead of you, while you're moving on, they'll be clearing out of the way. You have succeeded already. You are more than conquerors already. And the spirit of the conqueror lives within you. You will keep on conquering and conquering until we meet face to face at the feet of Jesus Christ. Lord, confirm it in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you.